Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to discuss something that Apple did that seems to have aggravated law enforcement. And in this particular case, if Apple's aggravating law enforcement, they're probably doing something that's good for their customers. So it says over here that the FBI is calling end-to-end -end encryption deeply concerning, while privacy groups are hailing Apple's advanced data protection as a victory for users, and I'll leave a link to that down below. It says here on Mac Rumors, Apple yesterday announced that end-to-end -end encryption is coming to even more sensitive types of iCloud data, including device backups, messages, photos, and more, meeting the long-standing demand of both users and privacy groups who have rallied for the company to take the significant step forward in user privacy. Apple's reputation as the pro-privacy tech company has long been at odds with the reality that iCloud backups are insecure by end-to-end -end encryption. This news means people's personal messages, documents, and data will be secure from law enforcement, hackers, and Apple itself. The group is now calling upon Apple to implement RCS messaging on the iPhone, a move the group says is a non-negotiable next step. Uh, Meredith Whitaker, CEO of the popular encrypted messaging app Signal, said that the decision by Apple to offer end-to-end -end encryption is great. There's been enough pressure and enough narrative work that they see this side of history forming. It's really incredible. Two thumbs up for Meredith Whitaker here and two thumbs up for Signal. Good work. Now, again, this is one of those cases where Apple doesn't necessarily have to be my friend when it comes to right to repair or the way they deal with their customers, the way they design their devices to do a good thing. And again, doing something that is aggravating law enforcement groups is something that is going to make their users and me by proxy happy. So it says here, while privacy groups and apps applaud Apple for the expansion of end-to-end -end encryption on iCloud, governments have reacted differently. In a statement to the Washington Post, the FBI, the largest intelligence agency in the world, said it's deeply concerned with the threat end-to-end -end encryption and user-only access encryption pose. Speaking generally about end-to-end -end encryption like Apple's advanced data protection feature, the Bureau said that it makes it harder for the agency to do its work and that it requests lawful access by design. This hinders our ability to protect the American people from criminal acts, ranging from cyber attacks and violence against children children to drug trafficking, organized crime, and terrorism, the Bureau said in an emailed statement. And I think many people that were around during the Patriot Act fury of 2004, 5, and 6 kind of understand why using that word as an end run around our Fourth Amendment rights is kind of tiring in 2022. Some of the examples I've given on this channel are not even examples with law enforcement, they're just examples with companies. In this video, Why Privacy Matters, Google reports customer to police for pedophilic behavior over doctor's photos. This is why privacy matters. This dad took photos of his kid for the doctor because he could make it into the doctor during COVID. And as a result, Google flagged his stuff and sent it to the police. Now you may think, wait a second, surely there must be a person involved here that looks at this stuff before it gets flagged and sent away for investigation. Here's what happened. So apparently the, there was another picture where the mother of the child did not have a bra on and was sleeping, hugging the child. And apparently that said, it off to, you know what? No, that has to be child abuse. As you see, at the end of the day, the reason privacy matters is not because we want to be able to do horrible things to people and get away with it. It's because it's none of your fucking business and I don't need somebody with an IQ below New York City room temperature judging my actions and then getting me into trouble for them. This is why privacy is important and this is why people just don't care about that protect the children terrorism bullshit anymore. If you are somebody who is discussing an abortion in 2022 in Texas or you're someone who's trying to open a business in June of 2020 in California, you may not want the government having lawful access to your private communications, and I don't blame you. Now here it says Federighi said that Apple, quote, deeply appreciates the work of law enforcement and supports the work of law enforcement. We view that we really have the same mission at heart, which is to keep people safe. Now, this is obviously corporate bullshit speak. But in this case, this corporate bullshit speak is a good thing because it's not corporate bullshit speak to the user. It's corporate bullshit speak to the law enforcement agencies that are likely looking to do an end run around your Fourth Amendment rights when the data is not encrypted. I want Apple to be BSing when they say that they care about your safety with regards to giving your data over to law enforcement or making it easier for them to make your data available to law enforcement. And simply because I dislike Apple intensely as a company, the way they deal with their customers, the way they design their products, the way they lie about right to repair and everything else, that doesn't mean that I can't say that they did a good thing. And I do think that here they did a good thing. It's very important to understand why trust is where it is and why people are valuing privacy to the extent that they do. You know, one of the things that I found interesting during the all the Edward Snowden leaks that happened about nine years ago is that when I would speak to people, there seemed to be this very interesting stark divide. It wasn't a divide between tech-savvy people and untech-savvy people. It wasn't a divide between Republican and Democrat. It wasn't a divide between man or woman or any religious or atheist. It was a very interesting divide that I noticed amongst people that were 
over 40, 45, and under 40 to 45, whether they considered Snowden a hero or a, uh, or a criminal. And it was, you know, what was interesting to me in having discussions with all the people that I did back at during that time was it, it really seemed to come down to how much do I trust that my government has my best interests at heart? How much do I trust that there are certain things that I just shouldn't know what my government is doing? I just shouldn't know if they're listening to what I'm, what I'm saying or watching what I'm doing to that extent because they need to have access to that in order for the well-being of society. And what seems to be happening is that that trust, whether in companies or in governments, seems to continuously be going down and down and down. I think it's very important here, rather than say, we really don't like this whole end-to-end -end encryption thing that we can't get around, rather to look within and ask, why is it that these citizens of our country seem to trust us less now than they did 30, 50, or 70 years ago? It says in the article, in January 2020, Reuters reported that... Uh, Reuters? 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 Routers? Linksys WRT54G. Linksys WRT54G reported that Apple dropped plans to encrypt user data in iCloud at the behest of the FBI, which was concerned about a move would hinder investigations and its intelligence efforts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that the FBI and all these law enforcement agencies should have lawful access to your data? Or over the past few years, would you prefer that your potential conversations about abortion, opening a business, doing anything else, uh, certain other contentious political issues should probably be private? I'm curious. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now. You know, Mr. Clinton, back in New York, you used to meow during the videos, but I noticed in Texas, you don't really meow much anymore. You want to talk about it? You want to talk about it? Oh, that was kind of like a silent meow. You kind of gave me a silent, you, you gave me that silent meow just there. Psst, psst, psst. Good boy. It was a good Clinton. Anyway. See you in the next one.